Hi there, my name is Nicole Kiebert with the New Show Journey to Hope team, and this is Voices of Hope. Voices of My name is Leanne Swears, and I'm married to my wonderful husband, Jordan, and together we have three amazing little boys, Cohen, Tyson, and Tanner. Before having kids and becoming a stay-at-home mom, I worked in a mental health hospital in Ontario, specializing in geriatric psychiatry. Following that, I worked in some long-term care homes as a recreation therapist. Shortly after moving to Saskatchewan, I settled into my most rewarding role as a mother to my children. We had three boys in three years and life was wild and crazy and wonderful. Then tragedy hit our family when two years ago, our three-year-old son Tyson suddenly moved to heaven. Our world was completely shattered and I wasn't sure how we were ever going to put the pieces of it back together. It's been a really long journey, but along it I have found healing and I have found hope in what seems like the most hopeless situation. So that's what I'm here to talk to you about today is grieving and finding hope. Grief is so very complex and extremely individual. And I think that nearly every brief parent has experienced at least one episode of depression, anxiety, or PTSD. After my son left his body, my heart was completely shattered and I wasn't sure I was ever gonna be able to put the pieces back together. I was so desperate to find hope. But unfortunately, what I found was a lot of bereaved parents kind of telling me the same thing. And that was that it doesn't get better, it just gets different. And I really wasn't okay with that. I needed somebody to tell me that it was gonna be okay. So I started scouring the internet. I wrote to bloggers, I read books, I found grief support groups anything I could to find a little bit of hope. And slowly but surely, I found these gems, these really wonderful, kind of rare people telling me that there is hope. One was a woman who told me that the rawness that I felt now, it wasn't going to last forever. And that was exactly what I needed to hear. And that's exactly what it was, was a pain that was so raw, kind of like a wound. The scar was going to remain forever, but the rawness of the initial wound, that, that was going to go away. And that's exactly what I needed to hear. And then I met a grief support worker who shared something that really became a pivotal moment in my healing. She said that I needed to redefine the relationship with my son in spirit. My son was no longer in the physical, but that didn't mean that I couldn't still have a relationship with him. And so it began trying to find my son in spirit. I had to get really quiet and I had to find moments of peace but slowly but surely, I found him. He was there, he hadn't left me at all. Tyson had left his body, absolutely, but his consciousness remained untouched, wild, playful, and free. He was guiding me, he was right there with us, and he was helping me heal. Now, sometimes, I became really overwhelmed with guilt. Like somehow the amount of pain I felt defined how much I loved my son. 
So if I had a good day, did that make me a bad mother? Or was it selfish that I had stayed here while my son was in spirit? Those things were, I knew that they weren't true, but yet they still, they still found their way in and consumed me. And then one day it hit me. The more I healed my heart, the more I was honoring my son. And that's what it was all about. It was about healing for my son, for my family, and for me. And I knew that if I could, could do that, I was really making Tyson proud. I always say that my pain is not my truth. My pain is my teacher. And so I choose to send it gratitude. But of course, healing doesn't happen just like that. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of hard work. Even on days when I don't feel like I'm moving forward, I'm still making progress. Even if it's 10 steps back, that's still progress. I'm still learning and I'm still growing. And I have to trust that it's all for my highest good. I'm doing the work at the pace that fits the season of my grief. And I have to tell myself that over and over again. I can't expect to jump from zero to 60. It takes time. And everybody's grief journey is going to be different. We just, we can't compare to one another. There were days when all I could do was get out of bed in the morning. And that was my big accomplishment for the day. And that's perfectly okay. That was a win for that day. And so I had to celebrate that and focus on on my small triumphs. Slowly but surely, things did in fact get better. I found that there was hope and with my son by my side, it was gonna be okay. In the early days of grief, I was taught some tools to help me get through the intense pain. And for a while, they, they helped, uh, but they weren't a long-term solution. I needed to be able to look at my pain and little by little, I needed to feel it in all of its intensity. And that was really, really hard, but I knew that it was the next step in my healing. I started with a simple gratitude practice. Sometimes all I could be thankful for was having a roof over my head. But that was something and I had to focus on the little things. I slowly started to find more and more things to be thankful for. And I will never forget the day when the words, I'm so blessed, just came out of my mouth. I was utterly shocked. I couldn't believe that I was even capable of saying those words again, but there it was. That was growth. Um, I started doing things to really nurture myself in all aspects of my life. So I started doing yoga more often. I journaled, writing out your feelings, that's like a really, really therapeutic thing. Even if you just write over and over again, like, I'm so angry, I'm so angry. Getting it out is just so therapeutic. I started a meditation practice and that helped me to connect with Tyson and to ground myself. Gardening became so therapeutic for me and for my family. In fact, we created a beautiful garden for Tyson on our acreage and that place has just become such a sanctuary for me. I also created a page on Facebook called Tyson's Light where I share the ups and downs of my grief journey and also the random acts of kindness that we do in Tyson's honor. Um, it's really been helpful for me to have a community of people behind me, supporting me, 
loving Tyson, even people who never knew Tyson, um, to be able to connect has been so very healing. It, it all helps me grow and I'm, I'm really grateful for that. All these tools, not only did they bring me peace, but they brought me closer to Tyson. And I found that they were lifting my energy. And the more, the more peace I felt in my life and the, the happier I was feeling that day, it really just made me more connected to Tyson. And at the end of the day, that's all I really wanted was to feel close to my son. Even though it was in a completely new and different way, this was how I'm, this is how I'm gonna survive it with, with my boy right there with me. My journey has taught me so much about life and about who I am. I've really learned that I am so much stronger than I ever knew and that I can, like everybody else, I can survive really hard things. Before my shattering, I was never that sure of myself, but I can truly say that I'm one of the strongest women that I know. And that in itself, that's, that's a real gift. That's a gift from Tyson. I've learned that love is not measured by time or space. It's measured by how open we keep our hearts. And Tyson really does show me that every single day. I've learned that healing is not just about the light. It's about honoring that shadow doing the shadow work while you look for the light. And I really wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for having that courage, the courage to face those really hard feelings and work through them. And grief isn't, it isn't a bad thing. Grief is just what happens when we love somebody so deeply. And what many may not know is that grief and joy, they can exist together beautifully. My journey has also taught me that it's okay to not be okay and how important it is to ask for help. I know nobody is great at asking for help, but I think especially when we're struggling, when we're grieving, we have to have some sort of support, whether it's a friend, a family member, maybe it's just an online support group where you don't even have to see anyone's face, but you can express yourself and have somebody to talk to. That's so important. And just always remember that no matter what, we're never alone. You're never alone on this journey. There is hope after the death of a child, and we don't talk about it enough. In fact, child loss is so very taboo, but healing really is possible. It just takes intentional practice, and that's hard work, but I promise you, it's so worth it. When you heal yourself, you are honoring your child, and you are healing generational pain your child hasn't left your side. They've merely stepped onto the other side of the veil. So talk to your child in spirit. Just take quiet moments to breathe in and feel your child with you. Feel them in your heart and trust that they are happy and at total peace. All is as it should be. I remind myself that every day. All is as it should be. As my youngest son once told me, heaven is within us. You just have to trust your journey and have hope, knowing that your life can still be beautiful and it can be full. It may look different, of 
course it's going to look different, but with your child by your side, with your child right there with you every step of the way, I promise you, you will rise.